So, good morning to all of you and welcome to the lecture 4 and uh, today we will continue our discussion on how to determine the corrosion rate of a metal. So, to say what are the governing equations that can be used to compute the corrosion rate. Before we proceed on this, uh, a brief recapitulation of what we discussed in the previous class will be in order. And um, towards the uh, you know the end of the class, we saw that how to predict if a metal will undergo corrosion in a given environment that we saw that right. And we also saw that if the metal is under equilibrium, it is not going to corrode. It will corrode only when it is deviating from the equilibrium condition. Suppose I immerse let us say iron in hydrochloric acid, you know what are the reactions right. The corrosion will occur by the oxidation of iron into a ferrous chloride and the H plus ions in the solution will get reduced to hydrogen gas evolution. These two uh, equations you know one is an oxidation other is reduction process. So, before we looking at the, the governing equation for the oxidation of the iron and the oxidation of uh, yeah, iron or similar metals and the reduction of the reducing species like H plus or metal ions anything can happen. We were trying to discuss what an electrochemical equilibrium is. If you recollect, we, we said that if I am going to construct an electrochemical equilibrium, let us say if I am going to uh, dip zinc, zinc in zinc ions ok zinc ions. We said that there is going to be an equilibrium between the zinc ions in the solution and the metal that is immersed in the solution right. So, you define this equilibrium as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives you zinc here. You define this equilibrium by one parameter all of you know what is the parameters which is E. E depends on what? E depends upon the activity of zinc ions in the solution. You can determine using the Nernst equation. What is more happening here? What is happening here is constantly zinc ions are getting formed in the solution by oxidation and that these zinc ions will again go back and get deposited on to the metal surface. And we saw this is under equilibrium condition. For simplicity, we consider that the zinc ions are in the standard state right. Then what happens to E? E equals to E naught right and this is going to be equal to minus 0 0.763 volts in the standard state. Right, we know this. Now, we also said that the rate of zinc 
going as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron is uh, is equal to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron to zinc right which I would say ok. This is the rate of this reaction, this is the oxidation and this is going to be the reduction reaction. So, we say that rate of oxidation is equal to rate of reduction right and you can convert this into current right. How do you convert into current? Any of you can recollect R equals to I upon N F and right. Since the rate of forward equal to rate of backward or whatever and this current is termed as termed as exchange current density. Am I right? We saw this in the previous class. What is the unit of current density? Amperes per unit area, right? Okay. So, that you know that. Let me go further into this, okay. Let me represent this graphically, right. I am going to make it a little more simpler. I am please look at I am plotting current density versus the potentials. It is relatively positive, this is relatively negative here. Why? This equilibrium it has got two characters. One is a potential defined, second I defined by the current density, am I right? Now, for a standard state the potential is minus 0.76. So, this probably let us say it is coming somewhere here it is minus 0.76 3 volt right this axis now right. It also has a current density am I right or not the forward reaction and backward reaction they go equally. So, can I represent in the diagram? So, I represent in the diagram somewhere here. What is this current called? This current density is equal to I naught current density between Z 2 plus and that here. Is correct or not? Right? Agreed? I am going to now disturb this equilibrium. I disturb this equilibrium now. Let us look at the equilibrium again. What is the potential of this? The potential of this measured is equal to 0.763 volt with respect to standard hydrogen electrode. Now, what I am going to do, okay, I am writing this equilibria here again. Z10 2 plus plus 2 electron gives you Z10 is equal to minus 0 0.763 volt. I am going to Take the case 1, I am going to make this potential here minus 0 0.863 volt. I am going to make this potential minus point 
eight six three volt. How do I make it? I to make it I need one more electrode here and I need a DC source, right? I just make like that. Now what will happen? This is now made negative by using another electrode. If you make it negative, what will happen? The electrons will start flowing towards this. With the electrons flowing through this, if I make it negative, the electrons flow through this. Yes? You can change the potentials, but the equilibrium will remain the same. That will be a new equilibrium potential, right? Assume that the concentration of the electrolyte zinc ions from 1 molar it has become let us say uh, 10 power minus 2 molar, right. You calculate the potential. What is the potential called? Still it is called equilibrium potential, right. Is it or not? Correct or not? And you use an Nance equation. Okay. So, even there the metal is in equilibrium with the ions, but at a different potential is not it. Rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction. The exchange condensing may not be the same is not it. The rate of reaction depends upon the activity of the species. So, the exchange condensing may not be the same, but even at lower concentration when you change the potential right. In fact, you do not change the potential, the potential automatically get adjusted that is a new equilibrium potential. I put other way around for simplicity, I take a beaker, I take zinc ions of 1 molar concentration, I put zinc there, I measure the potential using a standard hydrogen electrode which is minus 0 0.63 volt, I pour some water into that ok. So, what will happen now? the concentration of zinc ions will decrease, it will establish a new potential. Zinc ions still will have an equilibrium with the zinc metal. The new potential is different, you can calculate using the Nance equation. So, that is not a deviation from equilibrium, it is a new equilibrium, not same equilibrium. Am I right or not? This is different, ok, but it is also an equilibrium. So, standard that is why I said what is the difference between a equilibrium potential and a standard potential? Standard potential is a special case of equilibrium potential, the standard state, not different at all. They are in equilibrium conditions. That is why I always say that when you are predicting corrosion, you please do a simple calculation of equilibrium potential using Nernst equation. Please do not go into shortcuts, right? Then use that to determine the corrosion occurs or not. Otherwise, you jump in conclusion that minus 0.6, it has become minus 0 0.7. So, metal is going to corrode, it is not going to corrode at all, ok. So, that is thing you should understand. Equilibrium potential is independent of the concentration of ions, independent of even the activity of metal, ion, metal on the metal. Because it is a pure metal, we consider the activity of zinc is or metal is unity. Okay. So, I think this is a good point that you raised that you should understand that. So, let us put the come back to this, I apply a potential here minus what happens? Now, what will happen now? Please look at this, this reaction, if you do this, what will happen? Zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron, this becomes faster and what will happen to this? Zinc going as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron becomes slower. Agreed? Agreed or not agreed? Let us look at this one, right. Let us look at this equation, right. If I provide more electrons, what will happen to this reaction? The forward reaction will be increasing, the backward reaction will be simple, you know some normal chemistry concepts only, nothing is different, right. So, by doing this that means, now the net current is going to flow, am I right or not? 
So, if I am going to have an ammeter here, if I am going to have an ammeter here, I can measure the current when the current is going to flow on this surface. Earlier, the rate of oxidation is equal to rate of reduction. Here, the rate of reduction is more. So, there is going to be a net flow of electron in this direction like this, it goes like that only. So, the ammeter will start showing some values. So, there is going to be net current seen. Am I, do you agree or not? No, I think some of you have problems. Okay. So, the current is going to increase. So, I am going to move from that to this to this value, the current is now is increasing now. Agreed? Now, I am going to make it even more negative. What will happen? I make it let us say minus 0 0.963. What will happen? Yeah. The forward reaction will be faster, the reverse reaction becomes slower. So, the current will start increasing like that. Agreed? So, you find that we are going to follow like this. It is a good question. I come to that later actually. Okay? It is a good yes. Very important question is the straight line, is the slope is fixed, variation, right? It's a good question. Is the straight line or not? Is, of course, we are, I put a log scale here. I come back to that answer, it is a good answer. I mean, it is a good question, right? So, you will also ask a question why not the slope be like this? Okay? They are right, I am going to answer all this because it is a mathematical equation we are going to derive from this. Okay? So, it happens like that. Now, on the other hand, I am going to now apply, okay. Now I am going to apply. Now what I am going to do? Now, second, I am going to apply, let us say minus 0 0.663 volts. Please see here, I am applying minus 0 0.633 volt, huh? I am not applying plus 0 0.63, okay. Now, what will happen now? Now, this reaction will start moving faster, this becomes slower. That means, now I am going to get a current okay, given by this, if I increase the voltage further, further like this. Do you follow or not? Please do not worry right now why I am writing like that, but at least conceptually do you agree that when I move the potential relatively positive anodic reaction occurs, relatively negative cathodic reaction occurs. That is what I want. Do not worry about this slope and all these things. All I want to say that okay, that okay, that how things will be changing. Now, I am going to write this here as zinc going as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons represent this and this is what is zinc 2 plus plus 2 electron gives as zinc here. Conceptually understand right, I have some value of potential, I move relatively positive that means, I am going to remove electrons from the metal surface right, is not it. When I am going to make it minus 0 0.63, what does it mean? I mean the electrons are going to leave out of the system, right? Because it is moving out system, that means there is going to be oxidation. When I make it relatively negative, the electrons will move in, so there is going to be reduction process. So, depending upon that, the things are start moving up and down like this. Please understand this is, if you understand this, you understood corrosion full, you will have no problems in anywhere in understanding the electrochemical corrosion process at all. This is basic things. Please see here, why I am saying it is important. I have started with the potential of minus 0 0.763, I moved to a value which is let us say, let us say I have moved to a value, I give some value, let us say minus 0.563. Okay. I move to a value here, let us say minus 0 0.963. I am just giving some arbitrary value, do not worry about it. Okay. At 0 0.63, I am sorry, 0 0.763, no oxidation, no reduction because same, I move up this oxidation, 
please look at the sign here the sign is negative here the sign is negative here i can have a sign negative and i can still have oxidation i can still have reduction so you don't have to change the sign in order to call it an oxidation reaction or reduction reaction otherwise the old convention european convention used to say e is negative it's reduction e is positive oxidation incorrect i can have okay a, a negative things here and still i can have oxidation i can have a negative over here and still i can have reduction if i put a equilibrium potential there is no oxidation no reduction takes place so it is positive negative as no meaning at all in this case to illustrate further if i take copper suppose i take copper what will be the value here what will be the value here for a copper plus point 337 right if i move out move sorry if you move up it is positive slightly move down still positive i can have oxidation and i can have reduction this is a important thing so don't get carried away with the sign and tell there is oxidation there is reduction process no that is totally incorrect to attribute the sign for oxidation and reduction process so e is independent of convention it is the value that you determine from the from the equation that you get from here and please notice we said last time it's measurable just not only calculable i can measure it only thing is i had to measure with respect to a another reference electrode that's all okay you understood this actually any of you have any questions here please yeah Again? No, no, that is called steady state. What is the difference between a steady state and equilibrium? Steady state means there will be a drift slowly and then it becomes constant. See, so when you when you change the potential, I understand the reaction rate will not jump immediately, it will take some time, but after some time it reaches a value, a steady state value. Will be yeah, when you say equilibrium. No oxidation, no reduction. Steady state, no. It can be oxidation, can be reduction, but doesn't change with respect to time. Steady state means it's not changing with respect to time. So don't confuse between equilibrium state and the steady state. They are totally different at all. Okay, they're not the same. Let us continue with this. This is the important one. You should continue. We'll we we'll continue this spending some time on this. Okay, now come back to this uh, this discussion now. one see i will tell you right now we don't bother because now we are trying to stand walk run then we going to take up faster okay people do calculate transients when you do research for examples these transients have meaning at all actually okay that probably we have time we'll talk about it transients do have meaning they are used in understanding the electrochemical interface but right now we are not going to talk about transients we are talking about steady state because that's only a state where you can define very well right you can't define about it right otherwise transients have a meaning we do it electrochemical impedance spectroscopy all this we do that where the transients are being used okay right now we will not talk about that particular one let us let us talk about the difference between chemical reaction and electrochemical reaction what are the difference between these two metallurgy should tell chemistry guy should tell everybody should say actually right okay let me give a lead rate of chemical reaction what are the factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction concentration temperatures pressure huh? okay pressure is i can talk about temperature pressures activity 
order reaction okay so the rate of a chemical reaction is a function of what function of concentration temperature pressure rate equation right is what happens right the rate equation is what you get used with right let us look at rate of electrochemical reaction what is this function of what can somebody guess now? We are reasonably now we have seen. Hmm? Depends on what? Yeah. So, it depends upon the concentration, temperature, pressure, and what? And potential. I can alter the rate of reaction by altering the potential. So, when you are talking about reaction kinetics, rate of corrosion for example, you talk about what is the concentration of species, what is the temperatures, what is the pressure you are going to add one more dimension what is that potential is going to be there. And potential and current are interrelated. is not it. We have seen in the previous the previous uh, thing right I will show you here at least the potential and the current are interrelated. I have not completed the story here, but I just wanted to tell you that rate of reaction depends upon potential and potential and current are interrelated to each other ok. You talked about what happened to the change of concentration that will change ok. So, so that is the difference between a chemical reaction and the electrochemical reaction. Let us look at other things what difference between these two we have. Suppose I have hydrogen and oxygen I put them together do you think water will form very easily? Why it does not form? I put take oxygen, I put some combination of uh, it will be explosion, but otherwise you just take hydrogen and oxygen put in a cylinder. The, the free energy change is is negative that is why we have water right otherwise water will not be will not be there. So, the free energy change for hydrogen combining with water uh, I am sorry hydrogen combining with oxygen giving rise to water is negative right, but put oxygen and hydrogen together and it does not form water easily. Why? Why? People can ask question differently. You know, it's not the Why? You heard the concept called activation energy, right? There is activation energy barrier. Unless you cross the activation energy barrier, you cannot. So, how do you cross the activation energy barrier in chemical reaction? You rise the temperatures. So, temperature is the catalyst, kind of thing, right? Or you add a catalyst. So, in the case of in the case of chemical reaction ok, we use temperature as a factor to control the reaction. In electrochemical reaction we use potential to work on the barrier. Corrosion does not occur just like that. You apply more potential then only corrosion occurs otherwise the free energy change is negative only it does not happen. So, so we need to understand what is an equivalent of of activation energy barrier in electrochemical reaction ok. So, I am going to now talk about what they are ok. So, let us go into that concept of what it is. Now, we all know This is I yeah, I call it as a how do you use the term G? E is a potential, right? I use this term G maybe, I do not know. 
maybe distance A turning into B, there is a barrier for that and B coming to A, you have bigger barrier for that. So, this is all you guys know about it right. In electrochemical reaction also there is a barrier ok. What is happening in electrochemical reaction? Let us say zinc here goes into solution as zinc 2 plus ions it cannot simply come out, it is a lattice, it has to break the bond right. So, there is a barrier of activation from this to come over here, it is not exactly correct ok. So, there is a barrier it has to overcome ok. Unless you have this barrier is overcome, the lattice zinc will not come to solution ok. And for that to overcome, we use what is called as the potentials. I come back to this concept here ok. Let us see what it is E versus log i like this. This is true for most of the electrochemical reaction be it H plus H, zinc, zinc plus copper 2 plus copper whatever and this is your oxidation and this is and what is this? This is your I naught what is this? This is your equilibrium potentials am I right. Now, please notice if let us say let us say the reaction is let us say the reaction I given here and I just change the reaction here right? what is you can use any reaction you want right I use this if this is the equilibrium. What is the reaction here can tell me yeah quick what reaction for this is the equilibrium that I am representing what is the reaction here hydrogen evolution reaction. I want you to speak. What is this one? This is, this is hydrogen oxidation reaction takes place. Now, if I want to increase rate of reaction, suppose you know rate of you know, suppose I want to increase rate of reaction to this, I need to move the potential from this point to this point. Am I right? I have to move this potential here. What is the equilibrium state? I call it a 0 0 if you want it ok. If it is a standard state, you call it 0 0. Now, please look at I moved from this one to this one in order that the reaction takes place of my own rate I want it. If I want to increase it, I move further, I move further, I move further. I want to oxidize it, I move up, I move up, I move up ok. Please look at as I move down, down like that, what happens? The reaction becomes either oxidation or becomes reduction and the electrode is now set as the electrode is polarized. What is new polarization? Yeah, net now earlier it was, it was just is not any character at all it is simply both are forward now it is polarized. If I what means if I move down it becomes a cathode to so move up it becomes a anode. So, it is now polarized. So, that means the electrode is now polarized ok. So, and this is called as polarization a deviation from the equilibrium condition is called as polarization ok. That is polarization means that means, you want to say the concept polarization means deviation from the 
the equilibrium potentials is called as polarization. Anybody has a problem? Okay. Let me move further into this diagram, okay, the concept now. Let me move further into this. Let us draw this diagram fresh again. Okay. I move to this value and this is called as eta ok. Ok. So, eta equal to over potentials. eta is a over potential right. This a term is called a over potential and what is this one? This is called as E applied and what is this potential called? It is E equilibrium potentials ok. So, eta is equal to E applied minus E equilibrium potentials. Please remember this equation. Huh? If you are confused with this equation, you will have a problem. Okay. Let me see here. Now, for an anodic reaction, for an anodic, what will be the eta? Will it be positive or negative? positive right great for cathodic is equal to negative understood because this is the cathodic side this is your anodic this is the cathodic Okay. Now, you will ask question, you have been asking question before, what is this? This is a slope, I call them as beta a, this is a slope, I call them as beta c. So, beta c will be cathodic slope but I am going to use cathodic, please use the term Tafel slope the A is equal to anodic Tafel slope. Did you use? I use the T here capital here, huh? the name of the person right. He you found this relationship in the year 1905, he got this relationship actually. He did an experiment, ok. He did an experiment, he got this similar trend, he measured the slope, At that time we call a slope to recognize his contribution we call that we call that slope as the tapered slopes. So, the tapered slope now defines the rate at which the reaction occurs am I right or not ok. The slope is equally important right. 
now you can now use this he has also derived the equation eta anodic equals to plus eta a logarithm of i upon i naught eta cathodic minus beta c log i upon i naught. See you guys are all now good in mathematics right, you should be able to see how this can be derived. It is a simple linear equation right, nothing more right, because you know this is your i naught right, the topple slope you know that right. Now, this is the, the difference that you have here. So, you define this eta. So, i at any given eta, i at any given eta can be given by i naught if I know the tabular flow of this. These are called as tabular equations. Because see, here beta is what beta is a negative slope right that is why they put here ok. Slope is negative. So, you have minus beta and log i upon i naught. Now, what is beta? Can I take it out? What is beta? Beta is equal to 2.3 naught 3 or t by alpha uh, yeah n and yeah ok. Now, what is alpha equal to transfer coefficient or also called as symmetry coefficient. Generally, normally alpha is equal to 0.5. I will spend a minute on this ok. Let us take this not a good diagram ok, but I just made it ok. This energy right versus the reaction coordinate right it is called reaction coordinate or distance reaction coordinate. This is let us say this is let us say zinc 2 plus uh, zinc here ok uh, zinc uh, zinc let us say zinc 2 plus. Let us look at this one. If the guy has to move from zinc has to move from here to this See, I am de describing this, na? I am describing this like this, right. What is this? The zinc, zinc 2 plus, this guy goes back and forth like that, right. Zinc has to move from here to this is much easier, it is because the slope is less, but for zinc 2 plus to come up here is going to be more difficult. That means, what is here alpha is given as this is let us say um, x, this is y. Now, alpha, alpha for what? Alpha for zinc to go as zinc 2 plus is given as ok, x 
divided by x plus y equal to alpha. Now, for zinc to come out, what happens? For zinc to come out, this is similarly on let us say some other alpha for zinc 2 plus to move towards zinc, it is going to be what? It is going to be y upon x plus y. I think you guys would have seen it before, ok. That means this much easier. Now, alpha is alpha is smaller here, right? Alpha is smaller, this is going to be bigger. So, r I would say this is equal to 1 minus alpha. Can I say this? If this is alpha, this is equal to 1 minus alpha. You can able to get this alpha plus 1 minus alpha is equal to 1, ok. It is going to be there. This is you guys would have studied in many chemical equations and all actually. So, alpha and is what is really means. Please notice, please notice very clearly here, ok, ok. If alpha is going to be small, beta is uh, yeah, if, if alpha is going to be small, beta is going to be is large actually, ok. So, you relate this to much more easier in this case actually, ok. Can I move or you have any questions in this, this case, ok? Okay. Yeah. That is not a characteristic property. Hmm. It is okay. Let us look at what is alpha. Alpha depends upon the hill that moves here. Beta is equal to 2.303 RT by alpha n f. What is n? The number of electrons involved, 2, 3, whatever. F is a Faraday is the temperature or is the gas constant. So, beta is a characteristic property. And what? so is I naught. Huh? And so is I naught. I naught. Yeah, I naught also characteristic property, right. Because the guy moved, going to move right, alpha means the guy goes you know left and right, right. So, I naught is characteristics of a given system, ok. It is very important. In fact, you will see later I naught is going to decide what is the rate of corrosion more or less. If I naught is small, corrosion rate is small. If I naught is more, corrosion rate is going to more. We will see, we'll see later, ok. Right now, I want you to get a clarity in terms of the electrochemical equations that is uh, dictating the kinetics of that actually, ok. That is that is what uh, you should be really knowing, ok. So, this is so far we, we understood, ok, excuse me, um, the equations. Now, can can somebody um, somebody you know able to tell whatever you've discussed so far? You know, what do you, what do you, what is what is you, what is the what you understood actually? What have you understood in the discussion we had so far? Anybody? Yeah. See, in order that an electrochemical reaction to occur, either oxidation or reduction, there has to be an over voltage, over potentials. You have to deviate from the equilibrium potentials and that is also called as a polarization. If we increase the over voltage, if we increase the eta, what will happen to rate of reaction? It will automatically increase. If you look at the table equation there, ok. If if beta is more, I is going to be more. If beta is less, I is going to be less. So, higher the eta, higher is the polarization, the higher is going to be the rate of reaction taking place. So, this is the, the most important aspect of the, the electrochemical reaction, electrochemical kinetics, ok. And you have any questions so far? Um, we can, we, we can clarify this and then move, move further. 
No questions? Yes. So can we call that I as I know? Yes. Equilibrium potential is it's a kind of physical system, right? The equilibrium potential also change when you change the concentration of the species. You need to have, yeah, you need to have these values. Either you should theoretically calculate or you should experimentally measure the NR values. They are required. Very much the same that equilibrium potential will change with change in concentration, the I naught also will change because let us look at this. Now, you see the chemical reaction, the electrochemical reaction, a lot of commonalities that you have. Okay. Suppose go back to this. Suppose if these are going back and forth, right, how do you determine the rate of this reaction? R equal to K into concentration. It is a first order reaction, all right. If R is changing, I mean it has to change if the K is changing and C is changing. If R is changing, then I is going to change. So, the exchange current density will change automatically, but only thing it will happen is the exchange current density for a forward reaction is equal to backward reaction. That is not going to change. The, the difference between I and I naught is I naught there is no net oxidation or reduction, but when it is I it is either oxidation or reduction process. Yeah, I naught will change if you change the concentration of species, if you change even temperature things will change. Okay. So, but all it means it is an equilibrium and no oxidation, no reduction takes place. Okay. So, I am not going into details, actually, some of you who are more interested, please go through the book Bakris and Reddy, Modern Electrochemistry. All these are given in details, but since it is not electrochemistry course, I am not talking. So, I am discussing electrochemistry to the extent that you can understand corrosion better. There is no way a comprehensive treatment of electrochemistry, ok. It is not at all, ok. But those who are interested, you please read that book or you can read the book Buchanan, right. That is also a good book I referred in the in, in, the, in the beginning of my, my um, first class and I said what are the books I am referring, you can refer that book as well. But Bakris and Reddy, I would call it it is you know, it is it is it is like a Bible or Giza, whatever we can call it, ok. The ultimate in terms of in my view in understanding, clarifying your concepts. Or you can also read by Bod. Bod is another you know big guy in the field of electrochemistry, ok. Now, so let us now look at these things and um, now what I am going to look at here is now what ok. So, what you should know? You should know one the equilibrium potential calculations you should know what is over voltage you should know that is E voltage. Now, you should know how eta is related to I. We have not done much so far, we have just only you know made only three concepts clear to us actually, hopefully they are clear. Actually, there is one more if you are really more keen, I will write the equation here 
and those of you um, you want to uh, uh, understand better a better equation to 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 represent this electrochemical kinetics is i is equal to i not exponential 1 minus um, alpha eta n f by r t minus exponential minus beta I am sorry minus minus alpha okay, eta n f pi r t. What is this? Please look at i. What is i here? i is the net current. density ok and this corresponds to I anodic current this corresponds to I cathodic ok. That means, I is given as I anodic always minus I cathodic. these are uh, the equations we have and this is called as Butler Walmer equation and I am not going to discuss this in details, but those of you who are interested can read the book and understand it or if time permits we will discuss this during the somewhere uh, in the middle of the course we will discuss this ok. okay. Let me just before I proceed let me just clarify this. So, you should be in a position to calculate the current density right. Can you can you solve the numericals if I give some values based on the couple equations would you be able to do that ok. So, you will have some numericals to to, um, to understand this concepts ok and uh, probably we the coming week we will give you these numericals actually no? ok. Let us go to the electrochemical reaction more in details. Let me take this steel say in sea water ok, steel in steel sea water. What is the corrosion? Now, you will have iron going as Fe 2 plus. Now, we also have oxygen, water, right. Is it clear? Is it is it right? You guys are aware of this equation. Let us write pictorially here. The sea water it has some oxygen there, dissolved oxygen somewhere, all the places. Iron corrodes. The electrons are liberated here. What will be the cathodic reaction? This is the cathodic reaction, this is cathodic 
and this is the anodic reaction. The anodic reaction occurred, the cathodic reaction to occur, the oxygen has to migrate from here to this place, it or not. Similarly, the iron has to migrate from here outside has to migrate from here, you cannot just accumulate it there, right. So, what are the reaction here? What are the processes involved here? The process involved here are at the interface. There is a charge transfer. What does it mean charge transfer? Ion becomes Fe2 plus, trips the two electrons out, the oxygen moves here and takes the electrons, it becomes Ys minus. So, charge transfer occurs at the interface. But for that to occur, you have to have the migration of this. Right. So, to put it simply, some species, okay, maybe it is a, a negative a negative charge or a positive charge. The move here, and what happens? Then what happens here? Charge transfer. And this charge transfer, you see in the relationship now. What is the relationship here? It is the Taffer relationship. What you have seen before is a charge transfer is a relationship. And what is this? This is your diffusion control. So, the over voltage we have talked about so far, it is eta A and eta C, they are all called as charge transfer over voltage, they are called as charge transfer over voltage, okay. They are called as charge transfer over voltage or over potential, what are we call it over potential. That's what, that is the potential required for metal will get oxidized or reduced what happens. Now, we have one more thing. So, we need to know how these are happening at all. If you do this, then you have a complete understanding of electrochemical corrosion process, right. You have already seen how the relation between the potential and current exists at the interface. Now, we also know that if the ions have to take charge, they have to move from the bulk to the interface. So, we need to know the governing equation for that. So, what is the governing equation for that? Okay. So, that you can completely define in electrochemical corrosion reaction. Understood? Okay. So, we are going to look at this now and see how we can understand that. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Um, well, it is a good question, okay. Right now, we are not talking in terms of microscopic processes on the surface. We are looking at a macroscopic. I gave steel as an example here so that you get an idea about how the steel corrodes in the sea water, okay. You can take an iron you want, okay. You can take nickel you want actually, okay. The idea of giving here is that the oxygen, you know, I, I gave oxygen here. I did not put sulfuric acid, okay. I have given you a problem, I think I have not given it, I think T s have not given it actually, okay. So, the difference between an acid, 
sea water containing or exposed to air is that the solubility of oxygen here is what is about 6 ppm to 7 ppm maybe 8 ppm something like that. So, they are not going to be easily available on the surface they have to migrate from here. The corrosion now depends upon what depends on not this it depends upon how quickly the oxygen ion oxygen molecule migrate to the interface. If they do not migrate then the reaction will not occur this equation is of no use. So, I am talking in reference to why you should care this one please look at this this is in series please look at this in series right this move like this if this is faster and this is slower the rate determining reaction is going to be this right. If this is the slowest the fastest this is not going to control this is going to control I mean I do not know how I am jumping at all ok. This would be easier for you it is it's, it's, it's a series process right. If you assume that transport is much slower I apply more over voltage right I apply more over voltage let us go to this let us go to this reaction ok. I apply more over voltage the current is increasing right increasing, but current will increase only when if the species are available for reaction if they are not available what happens you only increase the voltage nothing happens right. So, this current will increase only when your species to accept the electrons or release electrons if they are not there. So, that means you have a transport process and then it is getting accepted here right. So, it is a coupled reaction the transport is an integral part of electrochemical process for any chemical processes also you know there is a transport happening at all. So, I did not use sulfuric, sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid the concentration of H plus ions are huge H plus move very fast you never have diffusion control process, but oxygen is less soluble and so in this case the transport becomes very important. We will see this later when you talk about corrosion of steel in sea water how important these equations are. These equations are very important when you talk about corrosion of steel in sea water corrosion of stainless steel in sea water they are very important why because that is governed by this transport process that is why we are now trying to understand the equation governing the, the transport of ions in the solution at all ok. Am I making this point clear to you ok. So, we look at this now. Now, let us go into the transport there are two laws governing the transport what are the laws I am talking diffusion what are the governing laws of diffusion Fick's law you cannot forget that huh? they are the great guys. Hmm? So, there are Fick's law the one is called Fick's first law second is a Fick's second law what is the difference between a first law and second law. First law is steady state and second law is a, a non steady state. So, we will not get into non steady state, it is very complex, ok. So, they are useful when you are going to do research, electrochemically you solve that also, but I am not going to use this in the class. So, the dis so the diffusion processes starts with the fixed fixed law, you cannot start from that. What is the fixed law says? Fixed law says J is equals to minus D d c upon d x right. What is uh, j is a is a flux the reaction rate is given in terms of moles per centimeter square area per second am I right reaction rate all of you guys will be knowing. What is D? Diffusivity 
what are the unit of this? Length to square divided by time. Isn't it? Okay. What is DC? Concentration difference. DX is what? Is the between two points, right? Okay, between the two points where the diffusion occurs. Let us define the electrochemical system. Now, you have the bulk a concentration okay. and what is this concentration here? It is a surface concentration right. This is a bulk concentration, this is the surface concentration and assume that the diffusion distance is this is the okay, assume this is your x for example. Okay. So, what do you have here? Now, can you convert flux into current? Can you can you not? What is the unit of flux? Mole centimeter per second. How do you convert this? No, J is equal to how to convert this? J multiplied by Can you? Can you or can you not? Is it right or not? No? Go back. So, what happens? I is equal to minus D dc upon dx n into f is it is it difficult equation or easy equation see if you know the number of moles can you not convert that into see this number of moles per centimeter square per second is a rate no it is a rate right it is a rate of reaction. So, you how do you convert that into current does anybody recollect hmm? is the equation correct or incorrect so, can somebody point out correct how do you get this please look at your notes ok see that is why you see we are now making a slow progress ok and they are not difficult, but if you are not uh, you know following up completely you might find it very difficult to understand what it is. It is simply very simple equations only ok. So, it is possible for us to relate the flux to this. So, you we will find out what is called as as the governing equation for what is called as a diffusion process and how the diffusion 
is related to the current. So, what is for example, I take S plus ions, I start moving from here to this, what does it mean? Is it only mass is moving or something else is moving? Hmm? Charge moving, when charge is moving, what does it mean? Current is moving, right? You try to try to understand, they are not neutral molecules, right? So, if these ions are moving, they are carrying the charges and so the current is going to flow accordingly depends upon what direction the ions are moving and which ions are moving positive or negative right. So, the flux is related to current ok. So, far the flux was related to what in terms of moles and all this now we are going to relate the flux to current. Why I am interested? Because I need to know what is the diffusion rate of oxygen to find out the corrosion rate otherwise I do not know. How do I calculate this? So, I need so I am really worried or I am bothered I would say that I need to know what happens to the corrosion of steel in, in water having 5 ppm oxygen there or 100 ppm for example. If the diffusion coefficient of species changes, what happens? Corrosion rate is going to change. So, what is the basic equation for that? So, these are the basic equations, ok. So, when I say I can calculate corrosion rate, I can able to calculate corrosion rate by knowing all these things. They are not difficult. I think you guys have done it in earlier subjects at all actually, ok. So, please brush up your things when you come back and we will see this in the in the next class, ok. Please understand we are now slowly complicating the subject. Why? I talked about so far zinc oxidation zinc reduction by one one table equation, you have two table equations right. But the actual corrosion process what is happening? Zinc is getting oxidized, H plus is getting reduced. So, there are going to be four table governing equations, am I right or not? So, please understand ok, but they are very simple, but there are two equilibria we are talking about in corrosion. One is zinc is in equilibrium with zinc ions, H plus is in equilibrium with the H. So, we talk about only one equilibrium of zinc having two tuple equations. Now, there I am going to talk about four tuple relationship because one equilibrium for H plus and H, other one for zinc and H plus. So, solving that equation becomes more difficult unless you understand it, ok. You please do understand it, ok. Get that things clear to your mind, it is not difficult again, again I repeat, but please look at the equations and then try to understand what these equations are actually ok. So, I mean it is like solving any mathematical problem, but you should know the physics behind this governing equations at all ok. So, please come prepared uh, for the next class, next class I can assure you is going to be more complex, more complex and more more complex ok, but they have a very common simpler understanding of the electrochemical concepts that I can say ok. So, that is not difficult, but complex ok. So, please uh, um, come prepare for the next class, I will uh, I'll really appreciate that. So, we will close uh, today's discussion just introducing the relation between diffusion and the current ok. And Friday we will meet again and finish first part of the electrochemical concepts required for corrosion rate determinations ok. Thank you.